Hey guys, did you know that this was initially supposed to be the first show that I was going to review on Sean's Network Reviews? The first show that I was going to review, Thundercats Roar, was initially going to be a first impressions review, where I would give my first impressions of the series, and go through a list of things that are wrong with the first episode. But, uh, plans changed, as shortly after I finished the script, I broke my leg on February 13th of last year. The next couple of episodes came out at a fast rate. I saw Just Stop and the Wacky Deli's videos about Mr. Enter, and I started getting so occupied with so many other shows, I decided to put this review on the back burner and save it for another time. And it's a good thing that I did so, since the show came to a cancellation as I started getting occupied with other shows. And much like Ollie's pack, I didn't want to come off as unfair and judgmental, considering the fact that I initially watched 12 11 minute episodes before I decided to quit, which rounds out to 6 half hour episodes. But as I said before, I decided to watch the entirety of the series that I could find recently, and yes, I was able to find every single episode this time, and I have certainly watched enough episodes to properly judge this show. And after watching every single episode and rewatching the 12 that I already did, yep, I still think that this show is bad. But let's get the backstory for this one out of the way before I get to the things that you clicked on this video for. Thundercats was a series made in the 80s, along with MLP, Transformers, and Ninja Turtles, that was made to sell a line of toys. Basically your average mid-80s cartoon before DuckTales aired and the animation renaissance was initiated from that. I don't remember growing up with the original show, and I don't have any knowledge about it. But I do know that it has a really catchy theme song, and often had a PSA at the end. And I also know that Snarf was annoying. My knowledge about the Thundercats franchise didn't roll around until the 2011 version, but my memories about that show were rather fuzzy. Mainly because around the time when that show premiered, me and my mom lost cable and internet, and we didn't get them back until December of that year. So the only time that I was able to watch the 2011 Thundercats was when I was at my uncle's house, and I don't remember all that much from what I watched of that show. So for the purpose of this review, and even when I was initially planning on doing a first impressions on this show, I decided not to watch the previous Thundercats show for the purpose of this review, to judge this show on its own, and it was terrible then. And guess what? A year has gone by and it's still terrible. At first, I was very easy on this show when it first came out online, to a point of calling it just bad. Then when the next couple of episodes came out weeks later, I realized that the show has already gotten worse by episode 3, and my opinion on this show sank lower and lower, to a point where by episode 12, I up and decided to quit, and moved on to watch better shows like Mau Mau Heroes of Pure Heart, which Cartoon Network seriously needs to treat better than they are now. I was originally thinking about scrapping this review when I realized that I would need to watch every single episode of a show in order to review it, until I got motivation from Supersonic War to bring it back, since I could find something to do with it, and boy that was a true statement that he said, because this show gives me so much to talk about, to a point where I don't know where to begin. Going through each and every single episode of this show, I can confirm that nearly every single thing about this show is terrible. Like, there are some positives that I could point out with the animation, and the show does have some episodes that I like, but nearly everything else left me either bored, annoyed, dumbfounded, or downright furious. What makes you find this show worse than the Tom and Jerry comedy show in Ollie's pack exactly? Well, let me put it like this. 
Thundercats Roar isn't as boring as the Tom and Jerry comedy show, since that show left me bored to a point where I had to take a break from watching that show after watching three episodes, because I was left bored to a point where I was shivering and cringing afterwards because I was that bored. It's not as unpleasant as Ollie's Pack unless you count Berserkers, any episode involving Mandora or the series finale, which I'll get to later. The Tom and Jerry comedy show, if you can ignore the obvious problems, is just dull and boring. And Ollie's Pack, looking past the problems that I pointed out with that show, is generic and predictable. Thundercats Roar is annoying. It's infuriating. It's actually insulting to both its counterparts and the characters from the other incarnations, which despite me not watching, I feel that they have been greatly disrespected, and it is actually disrespectful both in its tone and its comedy. But I'll be saving those criticisms for later. When the show was first announced, it was hated beyond belief. People started making claims that the creator of the show, Victor Courtright, was lying, and that the show was ruining Thundercats. But the thing is, that was just an announcement, and we didn't see anything else yet besides the theme song for the show. If I could defend this show on one thing, it didn't deserve to be piled up with hate yet at the time, because we didn't see any clips of the show yet. All we got were screenshots and the intro for the show. And just letting you all in on another thing, a real life person making a bad product does not give you guys a free pass to attack those that work on the show. You can give them critiques, but issuing threats and harassing them, as well as harassing those that defend the show, is unacceptable. But getting back on topic from my massive tirade, Unlike everyone else, I actually did go into this show with an open mind, since I am under the belief that the cover of a book doesn't judge the quality of it. Back when both Unikitty and Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles were announced, they were both mobbed at by a lot of people as well, and people thought that they were just going to be another Teen Titans Go, but when they actually came out, while they did get mixed reviews where some people didn't like them, there are a good number of people that do like those shows, with me being one of them. So I thought that if those shows could end up being surprises, why couldn't Thundercats roar? After all, the show did look pretty close to another show that I really like, OKKO okay, Let's Be Heroes. With enough elbow grease, and work put into character growth, this show might have been pretty good, and while it probably would have had mixed reception when it first came out, the show could have gained a cult following, where people would have said that it was an underrated gem long after the show ended. For a while after it was announced, Cartoon Network as well as Warner Brothers were silent about it, occasionally giving us a teaser, including the fact that they put it in a promo for what would come out in 2019, but the show in particular didn't come out until the beginning of 2020. I went into this show with an open mind, and came out greatly disappointed. And no, it has nothing to do with the factor of nostalgia or whatever, I am open to as many new things as possible, and there are modern cartoons that I do like. As I stated a second ago, I went into this show with an open mind, being disappointed by legitimate flaws. I judge the show by how it is on its own, and not counting nostalgia as the reason why I like or dislike it. So with that said, what is this show about? This show takes a more comedic and lighthearted tone to the Thundercats franchise, which was about a group of humanized cats evacuating from their home Thundera and landing on a planet named Third Earth, and making that their permanent home, and seems to want to be a parody of the Thundercats but the show in particular often flip-flops between its tones. Yeah, that is the first issue with this show. Its tone is largely confused. Much like Ollie's pack, the show feels like it does not know what it wants to be. On one hand, the show feels like it wants to be an episodic comedy that doesn't want to take itself seriously and be quote-unquote a parody of the original Thundercats shows, but on the flip side, the show has a lot of other points where it actually wants you to take whatever it says seriously. But it does not succeed with this because the lighthearted comedic tone is constantly destroying the mood, making you not want to take whatever it's saying seriously. 
When you're trying to mix being episodic and lighthearted with being dramatic and serious, you need to make sure that they are far apart from each other. Otherwise, the tone of this show ends up being jumbled, resulting in the tone to mix into a giant mess that ends up making jokes and being immature at the worst possible moments. Take for instance in the first episode, Exodus. Oh man, don't you worry guys, I'll be going more in depth with this very bad first episode later, that is a very poor introduction to Thundercats. One of that episode's biggest problems is the tone that it's trying to set up. Okay, so the beginning of that episode sets up that Thundera exploded and six of the cats decided to escape from Thundera after it exploded. That doesn't sound bad on its own. Too bad the show doesn't explain it with any dignity. There's the obvious problem where it does a poor job at introducing its characters, but once again, I'll save that for later. The way that they introduce these characters to the audience is both overly simplistic to a point of making people question who these guys are, and the way that the narrator d introduces these characters to the audience, especially the mutants, is both one-dimensional and extremely childish. Seriously? These guys are jerks is how you describe the mutants? Right after your planet exploded? And right after the mutants head towards Third Earth, following the Thundercats, we are introduced to Jaga, who reveals that he's a ghost now, since he was killed and turned into a ghost when Thundera exploded, and it leads into a very tasteless and disrespectful joke, where they portray the fact that he died as something to laugh at, where he goes all like, ooh, I'm a ghost, and leaves it at that, and doesn't even give him a proper farewell. And this problem, unfortunately, doesn't end at that abysmal beginning of that first episode. This problem continues throughout the rest of that episode. Whether if it would be in one part where it was building up an epic action sequence with Lino using the Sword of Omens in an epic scene, only to have him casually throw the sword at the mutant ship, interrupting a scene with a lot of stakes. In Exodus Part 2, that hammers this repetitious joke that the episode uses over and over again, and even plenty of other episodes where they build up something intense but shoots it down with a joke. Some of these moments aren't as bad as that first scene in the first episode, but it just emphasizes the fact that this show has a serious tone problem that gives it no excuse at all. Because something that has moments where it wants you to take it seriously, now makes it to where this show doing this is now inexcusable. People have often defended shows like Teen Titans Go, saying that it's trying to be a parody of the original Teen Titans and that it shouldn't be taken seriously. But as I said, that is now something that can't be excused for Thundercats Roar. And another excuse that has been aimed in favor of Teen Titans Go, as well as Powerpuff Girls 2016 and Ben 10 2017, is that people shouldn't look at those shows as trying to be like the original shows, and to judge them on their own. And that is fair, which is why I didn't watch the original Thundercats shows before watching this show, because I want to ride home the fact that this show is not good even on its own. You see, as I said, I didn't grow up with Thundercats. The networks that I grew up with were Nickelodeon, Cartoon Network, Disney Channel, and Disney XD, which used to be Toon Disney. I didn't watch that much from Boomerang back when I was younger, because you would need a cable box with channel guides in order to watch it. And even then, it would be part of an extended package. I say this because, like I said just a moment ago, because I didn't watch Boomerang all that much, that means that I didn't watch the original Thundercats show. So when I decided to watch the show for the first time, I decided to go in blind, which brings me into the first major con of this show. The first episode, Exodus Parts 1 and 2, is a textbook example on how not to do a first episode of a show. Aside from these two episodes and Thundercats Roar's crossover with Teen Titans Go, most episodes of Thundercats Roar don't get talked about that much. And that might be because of the first episode of Roar, and it turning away several people from watching any more episodes, and I personally don't blame them. Let's go down a list of things wrong with this first episode, shall we? First off, it is an extremely poor introduction to the Thundercats franchise. 
While I do give this show this in that it does introduce its characters to the audience, unlike Ollie's pack, the way that they introduce its characters, though, is so lazy, one-dimensional, and vague that I don't think that they should have attempted to introduce its characters to the viewers in the first place. Usually, what a first episode of a series would do is start off simple and would show us what the main character would do throughout that entire series, and would have its characters pop up one by one. This is what episodic cartoons like Ren and Stimpy, Rocco's Modern Life, and Spongebob would do. Or what they would also do is start off simple, have characters appear one by one, and introduce those characters one by one either through text or the traditional way of introducing its characters by saying their names out loud, or those characters first appearing. You see this in continuity-based cartoons like the original Teen Titans and Avatar The Last Airbender, or in animes like Oban Star Racers and My Hero Academia. Yes, Thundercats Roar's first episode does say the names of each of the characters that you'll be seeing. However, it does a horrendous job at introducing them. Apparently, according to this show, the Thundercats powers are their personalities, when that's not the case at all. A character trait and personality is what makes them a character, not the fact that they have a superpower. All that episode does is just them saying the names of the Thundercats and who is who, and the powers that they have. Even though, just saying their names and telling people what powers they have is not enough. And with the mutants, as I said a little bit ago, the way that they are introduced is extremely childish. Not only that, but their introduction is really poor as well. The narrator described them as jerks. Nothing else, really. They don't even say that they are the minions of Retaro or anything similar to that. Just that they are jerks. Nothing else at all. In fact, this episode was such a poor introduction to Thundercats that, just like Ollie's pack, for a brief moment, I forgot the names of some of these characters, because the first two episodes don't even spend that much time on them. Most of the time, it is spent with Lino, Mumra, Snarf, and the Mutants. And when we do focus on them, they're just there to either stand around or scorn the Burbles for saying the name of Mumra in a running gag that is beaten into the ground in one scene, no less. Speaking of which, this episode right here shows how bad a running gag could truly get. This episode believes that repeating its jokes over and over again will make you roll on the floor laughing, when that's not how it works at all. Even in a television show, Running gags work when the joke that is being repeated is only repeated once or twice. This episode repeats its gags even more than twice. In one sequence in the episode, Lino was talking to random objects and actual animals, as if they could understand what he's saying to them by saying, Tell me where the mutants are. And this joke is repeated right after the other, multiple times. And the punchline to this joke is Lino finding the mutants. But nothing beats this particular joke. In the episode, we are introduced to a group of robot bears named the Burbles. Apparently, they're a group of bears that can build things fast. But that's one of the only things that I remember about them. The other thing that I remember about them, though, is that the episode constantly beats a particular joke, not even a sequence after this joke is introduced. A year ago when I made the first draft of this script, I actually watched parts 1 and 2 of this episode for the second time with two friends of mine. One of them is an ex-friend of mine, while the other I'm still friends with. I actually counted how many times that they did this particular joke where the burbles get struck by lightning when they say, Mamra, and no joke, this was done over 11 times in the span of a 22 minute long episode. And this running gag in particular is used as a plot device. They probably decided to use this as a cop-out to find a reason why Mumra would get defeated, when they had so many other ways that they could have ended the episode than turning a gag as the way that the villain is defeated. But they did. 
And this particular joke that they beat down your throat was not even that funny in the first place. It might have worked as a chuckle or whatnot because of the unexpected nature of the gag, but having it be repeated multiple times can make the joke become old very quickly. Not helping is that the animation is very problematic in this show. I want to restate something that I said in my Tom and Jerry comedy show review, except what I'm going to say is just directed towards one particular thing. I'm not someone who usually gets all upset over the fact that a cartoon would have its characters go off model in certain sequences. Because those particular points where a character would go off model, you'll need to do tons of research in comparing frames with the other to notice that they would go off model. While others use off-model animation for comedic purposes, like Ren and Stimpy, Spongebob, and OKKO, but there is a line and limit that should not be crossed, and this show does exactly that and goes further while it's at it. In nearly every single sequence of this show, the characters either look wrong, or the actual frames of this show could end up looking downright unfinished. Let's explain the former real quick. As I stated a little bit ago, I don't mind characters going off model in most circumstances. I think that sometimes having a character go off model can make them look more expressive and lively, and can make the show look visually interesting. While Thundercat's roar in some frames does look visually interesting and all, other frames really attack the actual quality of the animation. Some of the frames in this show legitimately look like they are for a brief second smear frame, but in actuality, they are a part of the actual product. And I noticed some of these particular frames on my first viewing of the first episode. The worst of the frames in this episode is actually this one. This is literally part of a second of the episode. I'm not even joking. Tigra and Lino look squished down or were resized to look like that, and Lino's sword looks really tiny in this frame. And as for the latter, the unfinished parts of the show have so many issues, to a point where I'm going to be blunt when I say this, Thundercat's Roar has the most unfinished animation of all the shows that I reviewed and will review in Sean's network reviews. It doesn't actively have unfinished frames like the Tom and Jerry comedy show or uncanny designs like Kuku Harajuku, but this show is the most unfinished of the shows that I have reviewed so far in this series. There are a ton of scenes in this show where the backgrounds go from being fully complete and cohesive to not being there at all and just having a flat color. Almost feeling like it's trying to do a Ren and Stimpy thing, where the background has splatters of paint and having multiple colors for comedy, but it's poorly executed because this show doesn't pick any other color and just picks one. But if that wasn't the case, it only leads to the assumption that they didn't know what color to choose, and decided to pick only one, when there's someone that could take care of the backgrounds and could choose what backgrounds that they want for the scene. And because of this particular choice, where the backgrounds constantly flip-flop from being filled with detail to having only one color behind the character, while I was initially watching the episodes on my first viewing, this choice in having the backgrounds flip-flop was constantly distracting. And lastly, the character designs of this show on paper don't look bad, unless you're someone that gets triggered by characters having bean mouths. However, if you were to compare the character designs from this show to the designs from the other Thundercats shows, it gives you a whole new perspective of how these character designs look. I'm fine with the way that Mumra looks, as well as the mutants, because they do at least look intimidating in how they're supposed to look. Everyone else, get ready because there are so many things that I'm going to say that it's not even funny. Starting off with the obvious flaw, if you didn't tell me that these were the Thundercats, or cats in general, I would have mistaken these guys with either cosplayers dressing up as the Thundercats, or fans of a rock and roll group, and those cosplayers slash fans would be trolls, not humans, or especially cats, due to those ears pointing sideways instead of straight up. I know that with the reboot, some changes are expected, otherwise it would be a copy and paste of the past. But come on, none of these guys look remotely like the original Thundercats, and they don't even look like cats in the slightest. The show says that they're cats, but they just aren't. Cats have yellow eyes, 
pointy ears that point straight up, a T-shaped nose, whiskers, and dots on their cheeks. These guys, well again, if I wasn't told that they were cats, I would have confused them with troll designs colored in face paint cosplaying as the Thundercats or a rock group. This design flaw in particular would apply to Lino, Tigra, and the Thunder Kittens. Chitara and Panthro, I have different problems with. Chitara, to get this right out of the way, doesn't look like a female, but instead a male. And I wasn't the only one that was distracted by this. A friend of mine also noticed this design flaw. Like, I understand that Chitara in this particular show is a tomboy anyway, but there is a way to do it without confusing people on what gender the character is supposed to be. At least give her eyelashes at the bottom of her eyes or something. And Panthro is the one that looks the most like a troll out of all of them. Not only that, but his design, at least in this show, looks eerily similar to Rad from OKKO OK Let's Be Heroes. Almost like they found an unfinished sketch of Rad, traced around it, and made this design, and only made a few changes here and there. Lastly, Snarf. That's not Snarf. This is what he looked like in the 1985 version, and this is what he looked like in the 2011 version. If I wasn't told that this was supposed to be Snarf, I would have mistaken this for any normal cat. Though, I will give Snarf this, at least he doesn't talk in this version. This show also has some of the ugliest looking unicorns that I've ever seen in any cartoon ever. This includes the pre-generation 4 MLP designs, because at least with those designs, you could argue that they were trying to go for a realistic look, thus they ended up not looking appealing, throwing out the animation principle of appeal in the process. These designs, on the other hand, look neither appealing nor realistic. I don't know, I just can't put my finger on it. Maybe it has something to do with those lips, or maybe it's those teeth, or the fact that the eyes look so small that it makes the designs look so awkward. The designs get even worse when just like the other characters, in every single frame, these unicorns make distorted faces, leading to these unicorns' ugly nature getting even worse. Not helping is that their first and only episode, Secret of the Unicorns, is kind of a downer to watch. Because most of the episode involved the characters crying, and in a lot of other parts of the episode, barely anything happens. And the last problem that I have with the animation, and this might be a nitpick, I know, there are multiple sequences where its characters go all dot-eyed for no reason whatsoever, when in those particular sequences, they're not even that far away from the camera. Unless you're Adventure Time or Bravest Warriors, which both had their characters stay dot-eyed for the entirety of their shows, and My Life as a Teenage Robot or Steven Universe, which used dot-eyes when its characters were far away from the camera, Having a character go dot-eyed out of nowhere is extremely jarring. I mean, it's understandable why they do this in far away shots, since from personal experience, trying to draw a character in a small format is a pain in the butt. And My Life as a Teenage Robot as well as Steven Universe also use this. But if the character is not far away from the camera, having your character go dot-eyed out of nowhere ends up becoming both off-putting and distracting. I mean, one positive that I do have for the animation in this series is that the action sequences are a blast to watch. But even then, the animation problems constantly get in the way of that as well, due to the fact that they more often than not don't even have backgrounds in certain shots, or when they choose a background element, it makes it look empty. The animation in this show obviously takes notes from OKKO OK Let's Be Heroes, which is a show that I love. The animation is one of the aspects that I like, because I think that it looks unique and could end up leading to shots that look cool and slick, as well as visually interesting. Even though that show does often get criticized for its animation because it has its characters go off model, at least that show doesn't constantly flip-flop with its backgrounds and it used its faces sparingly. Thundercats Roar does the former with its backgrounds, and as for the latter, this show substitutes its jokes by having characters making wacky faces constantly, 
Just like Camp Coral, this show thinks that making wacky faces equals comedy. Emphasizing this right now. Wacky faces enhances the jokes. They aren't meant to be the actual jokes. So, after I watched episode 1, Exodus Parts 1 and 2, I started working on a script for a first impressions video on this show, and changes ended up happening to where I broke my leg and I initially planned on scrapping this review, but due to motivation from Supersonic War 15, I decided to bring back this review since I could do something with it. And during the time when I had a broken leg, I decided to check out some of the other episodes to see if this show would end up getting better over time, since shows start off pretty slow and would end up improving later on. This show actually got worse to my surprise, and legitimately changed my rating of this show from being just a regular 3 out of 10 just bad, to a 2 out of 10 AWFUL. Getting the first major issue with this show's next couple of episodes right out of the way, this show never shuts up. There is constant talking, constant exposition singing, the music is constantly playing without some moments of silence, and the characters constantly fidget around clumsily on screen. There is not a single microsecond in this show where the show takes a break and has a character do something calm to calm the episodes down a little bit. It's like if the show thinks that if it stops for a single microsecond to take a breather, that the children would get bored quickly. Yes. As shown by how badly the good dinosaur did, it shows that being way too quiet can also be a bad thing. But not taking a break and having constant noise isn't any better. It's actually worse in fact, because it shows that you don't have any faith in your viewers. Thinking that they can't handle a few moments where it takes a breather and has characters casually talking to one another, and could potentially give others a headache because of sensory overload. I was one of them. While I was watching the third episode on my first viewing, I felt a headache coming on while watching, and re-watching the episode and all of the other ones afterwards, I can see exactly why that is the case. Do you guys remember the Spongebob episode, The Knitwitting? Well, a lot of people do, due to a really gross sequence where Spongebob drinks his jar of spit, but that's not the part that I'm referring to. I'm referring to the rest of that episode. My problem with the Spongebob episode, The Knitwitting, was that it was a constant barrage of nothing but noise, to the point where that episode was downright headache-inducing to go through, because that episode never took a break. Basically, what if there was a show where every single episode had the same problems as The Knitwitting without that one gross-out moment? That's Thundercats Roar's main issue. And the other main issue with this show, that purely attacks any likability that the show probably would have had, if they were just kind of average or bland or semi-interesting, are the characters. If they were just one-dimensional and non-interesting, that would be one thing, but this show takes it to another level. There are some characters that are just bland and one-dimensional, Panthro, the Thunder Kittens, and the Burbles are very bland, but then there are the other characters. The only one that I don't dislike is Tigra, mainly because I feel absolutely sorry for him most of the time, because he's usually used as the show's punching bag most of the time. A lot of the other times it's Mumra. Take what I said about how the show Unikitty treats Richard, and apply it to this show, except it's cranked up to 11 here, to the point of feeling extremely uncomfortable, like the characters don't even care about Tigra unless he's there to clean up their messes. And this show seems to have a very low opinion about Tigra whenever he decides to join the fun with the others. In all honesty, the only moment where Tigra is actually bad is the episode Mandora's Law, and that's because of the fact that he's way out of character in that episode. Seriously, Tigra, you didn't think for a second that the mutants were going to use your rules against you? But other than that, he's truly the only sympathetic character in this show that is supposed to be the protagonist, because he's the only one that has common sense in this show, and because the show treats him horribly. One episode, Thunderslobs, has the other Thundercats act as if Tigra doesn't even exist, and on their mission, after all the Thundercats defeat Mumra, they leave Tigra behind, 
forgetting about him entirely, until they find out that they left him behind with Mumra, and they decide to get him back. Now, you could argue that maybe these are unfortunate implications, and that maybe the episode isn't trying to imply that the only reason why the others care about Tigra is because he cleans up their messes. Kind of like how the Tom and Jerry comedy show episode Most Wanted Cat was implying that the only reason why Jerry was wanting Tom back was only because he wanted to save his own skin, but I can't even say that this episode has unfortunate implications, because the episode explicitly states that the only reason why the Thundercats care about Tigra is just because of the fact that he cleans up their messes. In another episode, Mumra the Everliving, they act pretty negatively towards Tigra whenever he tries to have fun with the other Thundercats. In fact, the entire episode acts like it has a vendetta against him, and the Thundercats even neglect him in the end when they all become giant. And Wizra is a really annoying episode, with the Thundercats messing up the entire Thundercats lair because a ghost popped up in the mirror. And when Tigra tries to explain to them that they need to research the ghost in the book before making judgments, the ghost pops up in Tigra's glasses and they think that he's possessed, just because of that. And they treat him and the book as disposable for that one particular reason, instead of performing an exorcist to get this supposed ghost out of him. And the worst part is that he went through these things, and they were all for nothing. So the lair ended up getting all trashed and messy, only to be told that the ghost in particular was only there to congratulate the Thundercats for keeping Third Earth safe. So not only did the Thundercats lair get destroyed in the process, but their appliances ended up being destroyed to the point of no repair, and Tigra ended up suffering the most. Because he worked so hard to get the lair all cleaned up and sparkling, only for it to be trashed up again, and it was all completely pointless. The other characters... Let's talk about them. Chitara is a very bland character. She's basically just a female Sonic the Hedgehog in this show. The only thing that I know about her is that she's fast, and there's nothing else to her than just that. Well, uh, she's a CEO that is the mayor of an entire village. That's pretty much it. And in one episode, she was incredibly selfish. Let's talk about that real quick. In the episode Safari Joe, she wants to trap Safari Joe in a trap to give him a taste of his own medicine. Not because he trapped any of the other Thundercats before, but instead it's because he trapped her. She doesn't care if it happens to the other Thundercats, she only cares if it happens to herself. Much like Thunderslobs, the episode doesn't imply this, it literally states this. Tigra even points out how disturbing Chitara's intentions were. If Safari Joe didn't plan on permanently trapping them in the dome, Chitara was going to trap him in the dome, even if he was going to turn over a new leaf. However, the absolute worst of the Thundercats in this show is definitely Lino. I despise Lino in this show so much. The problem with him in this series isn't so much the fact that he has harmful intentions. Whenever he does something that affects his friends, he doesn't do it on purpose or out of malicious intentions. Gus from Robot Boy and Ollie from Ollie's Pack are worse because they do things that do much more harm and they know about what they are doing. The problem with Lino in this show is that he is way too stupid, especially for someone that was put as the leader of a group of heroes, where leading that group requires responsibilities, but the problem is that Lino is an absolute idiot in this show. And it actually baffles me that someone like this was put in charge of the Sword of Omens, when, in the words of Uncle Ben, with great power comes great responsibility. Seriously, this guy was put in charge of handling a sword with a ton of power? This guy was supposed to be next in line for the throne of Thundera, and this guy is the leader of a group of heroes, when this leader in particular is so dumb and incompetent at leading a group and keeping the Sword of Omen safe that he makes Homer Simpson from The Simpsons look like an award-winning genius. I didn't notice this until my first viewing of episode 3 to onward, but Lino in a ton of episodes does so many things that could have either gotten the Sword of Omens put in the hands of villains, like in the episode Lost Sword, 
Or he could have gotten his friends killed due to the fact that he incompetently said to Mumra that those cats are his friends and that they're going to take him down, which prompts him into knocking down the roof of the Thundercats' home, and Mumra goes and attacks them in Exodus Part 2. Or are things that literally got himself into trouble. In the first episode of Exodus Part 1, he throws the Sword of Omens at the mutant ship, and later in that episode, when he finds the mutants in the forest, the mutants go right back into the ship, which they were fixing in the same scene, no less. Lino questions, Duh, why are they going back into that broken down ship? Well, duh, Lino. They were fixing this ship when you came across them in the forest. In one of Lino's most frustrating appearances, Driller, he only cares about himself, and when he has a discussion with the Driller robot, he incompetently states that the robot is useless, which gets Panthro to feel as if he's useless as well. And Lino doesn't care. All he cares about is that things are back to normal, even though he caused the conflict to happen in the first place. All he cares about throughout the episode is his stuff getting destroyed, not the fact that their house could explode. And this is literally that episode's running gag, which is not funny in the slightest. In Lost Sword, he forgot about what he was going to do about the Sword of Omens being on low battery seconds after being reminded and launches the sword with Panthro's catapult when there were other places that you could have placed the sword that isn't the catapult. Working Girl, where Lino tells the village that they are the Thundercats, despite the fact that they are banned from that village, and he was told that they were banned from it. <sighs> One of his stupidest moments, Mandora the Evil Chaser, where he lets out a bunch of villains from a prison cell ship, and doesn't know that they're villains until he's literally spoon-fed that information. And so many other episodes that I don't have time to delve into right now, because there are way too many episodes where Lino is incompetent. I mean, yes, Lino does do some things to help out his teammates and all, but what is it worth when Lino does things like pulling the plug on Third Earth and telling the mayor of the underground village that he was the one that pulled the plug, and trusting his sister, who literally backstabbed him and got him and the other Thundercats arrested, and not being able to tell that Tigra wasn't acting like himself because he was hypnotized. All throughout my watch-through of these episodes, I would question, how did Lino of all the cats on Thundera that could have been picked to be next in line, including his sister, was he picked out of all of them? Maybe it has something to do with how his father is. Now, as I said at the beginning, and at other points in this video, I didn't grow up with any of the other Thundercats shows. However, from seeing the ways that the King of Thundera, King Claudus, was portrayed, I can feel that he has been greatly disrespected. Hey, there's a fact that I think you should know about this show. Did you know that King Claudus, alongside Jaga and Rotaro, in this show is the reason why Thundera exploded in the first place? And why only seven of them remain? What the episode shows us is that the king just decided to ignore what his assistants would warn him about, and instead of, oh I don't know, evacuating everyone from the planet, he decides to act as if it's no big deal and watch TV while drinking soda. And when Thundera exploded, he still didn't care, and decided to continue watching TV with no care in the world. And after that particular flashback, when King Claudus reunites with the other Thundercats, he doesn't even recognize his own son. Seriously? Lino was an adult when Thundera exploded. You should know what your own son looks like. And all throughout the rest of that episode, they portray him as an absolute jerk who cares about nobody else but himself. And his own son. No, actually scratch that, he only cares about his son, not because he sees him as an actual living creature, he treats him more as property because he's my son. And understandably, near the end of that episode, the characters become all fed up with him for good reason. So they decide to set up a fake alarm that the planet is about to explode, so King Claudus decides to take all of their food, put them in an escape pod, and leave them all behind. So basically, if Third Earth were to actually explode, King Claudus would have been fine with leaving them all behind to be killed in an explosion. That is insulting! 
But Sean, there could have been other ways to evacuating the third Earth. Jem, what are you doing here? Eh, I'm just bored, so I decided to just roam around. Okay. And to counter what you said, true, there were other ways to escape, but King Claudius did not know that. All he knew about was that there was an escape pod and one escape pod only. Yeah, uh, I'm just gonna pretend like I learned nothing and act like an a <laughs> to some other loser here on YouTube. Oh god, what am I doing with my life? Alright, meanwhile, I'm going to continue with the review. So, where was I? Oh yeah, this insulting character in episode. If the planet actually did explode for real, he would only take food with him and leave all the Thundercats behind to die, or leave them to find their own ways of evacuating. He doesn't care about the well-being of his own people or even his son, all he cares about is having food with him, as well as condiments. Of all the episodes of this show, this was one of the episodes that truly made me furious. If I was a fan of Thundercats, this episode, which is named Claudus, would make me even more furious. The only other episode that made me as furious as this one is Hachiman, which segues into another problem that I have with this show. This show a lot of the time points out its own flaws, like how certain characters literally point out that something is a stupid idea, and even points out the dark implications. Like in Safari Joe and Plunsmus. The problem? They do nothing with it. Whenever Tigra or whoever else is self-aware about these problems with certain characters and situations, they just let it sit there like a perfectly good sandwich that someone didn't eat that they left at the table. Hey, what was that phrase that Mr. Enter used back in the day? What I'm doing is wrong, I know it's wrong, but I'm gonna do it anyway? That's basically Thundercat's roar. And they don't even do it in a way that is cheeky or do it with moments of satire like Animaniacs or OKKO. They just state their problems and they do nothing with it. If they were doing it as part of a joke or something, that would be one thing, but they don't. As for the comedy, since that's the show's main selling point, how is it? The jokes in this show don't make the landing at all. Most of the time, the show does nothing but wave keys in front of your face. The show thinks that wacky faces are the joke, but are not meant to be the main joke. And the show uses Lino's absolute stupidity as comedy. But the thing is, him being stupid would only work if he had non-sequiturs like Ed or Patrick Starr. But the show instead uses his stupid decisions as the jokes and nothing else. Oh, and also, this show seems to have a certain hostility towards the original 1985 version, as well as its viewers. Not as much as, say, Teen Titans Go in terms of the hostility towards its audience, but it still happens at points. Whether it's things like its crossover with Teen Titans Go, where they go all like, anyone who doesn't like this show has a poop mouth with poop opinions, or the aforementioned episode Hachiman, where they take cheap jabs at the original 1985 series with the show within this show called Silverhawks. Which, doing research, was originally a ripoff version of Thundercats in the 80s, but it still feels suspicious of how they take cheap jabs at the original 80s series. Where they have it, teaching lessons and doing things as stiff as possible, and the characters claim that it's a boring snorefest of a show. Uh, Thundercats Roar, without that boring snorefest of a show, your show wouldn't even exist at all. In fact, without a lot of cartoon shows from the 1980s, we wouldn't have gotten so many cartoons that we have now, including the cartoon that you obviously took inspiration from, Teen Titans Go. I understand that cartoons from the 1980s as well as the 1970s are now seen as cartoon shows that were overly friendly as well as toy commercials. The Simpsons and The Amazing World of Gumball have made fun of these stereotypes before. But even if you don't like them, you need to show them respect. At least the ones that are the reason why we're still experiencing a golden age of cartoon shows to this very day. Yes, there were some cartoons from that time period that were not worth remembering, as well as not being good and definitely not making an impact. 
I even reviewed one of those shows that came out in the 1980s at the tail end of the first year of that decade. But with Thundercats, it means so much to so many people, and it, along with Transformers and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, was the reason why we ended up getting a lot of action cartoons. And the original Thundercats was the reason why this show exists. So, describing it accurately, Hachiman is basically the animation equivalent of making fun of and embarrassing your grandfather in public. Is everything about this series bad? Well, no. The animation can have some moments where it's colorful, and the action can be good. This show fixed Snarf a lot. Yeah, there is one particular problem. I'm pretty sure that he wasn't a robot in the original Thundercats, but I think that it was for the best that he's now mute. Because I heard that Snarf was annoying in the original Thundercats. And there can be some good episodes, like the episode Mumra a Plundar, which was coincidentally the last episode aired before Cartoon Network started burning off episodes months later. But uh, those things are not worth it. When you factor in things like the animation mistakes, its inconsistent tone, its characters, its infuriating moments, and how hostile and insulting it is to both its characters, and I'm pretty sure, extremely insulting to the original source material. And the positives that I do have for this show definitely isn't enough to save the show that has one of the worst ways that you could end a series. Yeah, before I get to my final verdict and before I end things off, let's talk about the series finale real quick. The episode is called Mandora Saves Christmas, which, starting this discussion right now, the title is a blatant lie. Mandora in the episode doesn't actually save Christmas. In fact, in the episode, she acts unreasonable towards Santa Claus throughout the entire episode, so this finale is off to a bad start when the title is absolutely false. The episode revolves around Santa Claus going to the Thundercats for help with delivering the rest of the presents without Mandora catching them. Here's my first major problem with this finale, it's extremely predictable. You could see what is going to happen from a mile away, because Mandora has arrested the Thundercats in other episodes for small reasons, including aiding villains and wanted criminals. So what do you think is going to happen when Mandora finds out later in the episode that the Thundercats are helping Santa deliver the presents? Exactly. The next issue, as both a series finale and a Christmas episode, it's surprisingly unpleasant. The only other Christmas-related things in media that comes close to this episode is the Christmas Tree, the Doug Christmas episode, and Eight Crazy Nights. This episode's overall unpleasantness is all thanks to one particular character, and that character is Mandora herself. I haven't brought her up in this video yet, because I already had so many other problems with a lot of the other aspects, and how frustrated I was with some episodes. Mandora, while not the worst, most frustrating or insulting character, Lino and King Claudus are worse, that's not saying much when it comes to Mandora. The problem with her is that she is just unpleasant. In all of her appearances, her only shtick seems to be arresting the Thundercats for things that were accidental or simply aiding someone, without being understanding towards their intentions. If she had moments where we get to see why she's like this, maybe I would be more forgiving towards her, but we don't get to see her that much in this show. The four times that we get to see her, she doesn't have any of these moments. There's a running joke that she's only compassionate about others whenever she's not working, but we only see that like, what, twice? And even then, only one of these moments even had her trying to root for Lino or any of the other Thundercats. The other immediately had her go back to being unpleasant after letting them have a Merry Christmas. Of the four of these episodes that she appears in, only two of these episodes were even justified in arresting any of them. In one of these episodes that is unjustified, she arrests them for aiding Linus, who is a fugitive, when Lino was the one that was aiding her. But this is her absolute worst episode. She starts out the episode by immediately wanting to arrest Santa Claus for speeding up, and she doesn't even let him give an explanation for that. And near the end of the episode, when she finally lets Santa explain himself, 
she's not understanding towards him at all. And as a finale to a series, including a finale that is supposed to be for a comedy series, this is a really sour way to end things off. The ending of the episode and the ending of the entire show has the Thundercats and Santa in prison. And the final line is Mandora threatening them that if they don't stop being happy, that she'll put them in separate prison cells. That's it. So it only leads me to assume that they'll never be able to get out of prison because the show literally ends right there. While the episode isn't the worst series finale to a cartoon since this series is supposed to be a comedy, this is one of the worst finales of the shows that I have in Will Review and Sean's Network Reviews so far. This episode literally rivals Mama's Boy from Robot Boy in that regard. And ironically, much like that show and the Tom and Jerry comedy show, after this review, this is one of those shows that I plan to never watch again. The only time when I will think about watching this again is if I do a review on one of this show's frustrating episodes. So where does this show go on my ranking? That's a good question. Is it the worst show that I reviewed in Sean's Network Reviews? No. There's at least one other show that I've yet to review that is worse purely because of how unwatchable I think it is. So a better question is, how does this show compete with some of the other shows that I've yet to or have reviewed? Like the Tom and Jerry comedy show, Robot Boy, and Ollie's Pack. While those shows are much more boring, frustrating, and unpleasant, you can make the argument that those problems were purely accidental and that they just didn't think through their implications. With Thundercats Roar, you can't even give them that excuse because they know for sure about their own problems, but they do nothing about it. Making the show, while not as infuriating as one of the examples that I brought up, it's much more insulting, and there are so many episodes that gets me so frustrated to the point of making my blood boil. And considering the other shows that I'm reviewing in this series, that is saying something. And it seems that Warner Brothers didn't learn that much from Thundercats Roar, because there's an upcoming Aquaman show that uses this exact same art style. <laughs>